this tutorial, we're going to create a single Java class that can draw both the ball and the paddle for our Pong game. Let's start by creating a new Android Studio project. We're going to call our project Pong. We're going to leave this stuff alone, and we're going to start with an empty activity. I'm going to call this the Pong activity. Before we start coding, let's think about our design for a second. What do our two sprites have in common? Well, they're both rectangles. Admittedly, the projectile is a square, but that's just a special case of a rectangle. They both have color. They both have x and y coordinates on the screen. And both are capable of movement, although the ball undergoes autonomous movement while the paddle responds to presses on the keyboard. We should be able to encode a generic class that encompasses all these features. What would be a good name for this class? Why don't we call it a Pong Sprite class? I'm going to create a new Java file to sit alongside my Pong activity by going to File, New, Java Class. Let's define some state variables that are going to belong to each of the sprites in our game. Each sprite will have an X and a Y coordinate on our screen and will have a trajectory. The trajectory will be the default location that the ball will head towards when it's its turn to move. The sprites, each rectangle, will have a height and a width. And we're going to have a speed factor which we'll initially set to 1, but if we want the game to move at a faster rate, we can increase the speed factor. The paint will help define the color of each sprite. Up here I've developed a random number generator that's going to be useful for adding some randomness to our game. We'll explain later why we need this. Now let's use Android Studio's code generation capability to add a constructor. By default, you can see that Android Studio will want to alphabetize the list of parameters in the constructor. But we don't want this. We would prefer to have them listed in the same order as we define them in the class. By clicking on this A to Z block, you can see that now they're in the correct order that we want in our constructor definition. Okay, so there we have our constructor. Now to create some getter and setter methods. I think these are the only ones we're going to need. Okay, with that out of the way, we also are going to need to create some utility functions. Let's put them in right now. Since both the sprites in this game are going to be rectangles, we can use a single draw method with a rectangle defined. And the rectangle is defined on this space with the top left corner and the bottom right corner. This defines the color for the rectangle. This move method is the autonomous move that the ball will use to figure out where to go next when it's its turn to move. Here's an overloaded move method that allows the user to place the sprite anywhere on the screen. We want to use these reverse trajectory methods to change the direction of the ball when it undergoes a collision with a wall, a ceiling, or a paddle. 
Likewise, when we create a new ball for the game, we want to give it a random trajectory so that the play is different each time a new ball is created. We've now developed all the methods we're going to need to encode both sprites for our game, the projectile as well as the paddle. Thank you.